Introduction to Constellations Wikipedia. A constellation is an area of the celestial sphere in which a group of visible stars forms a perceived outline or pattern, typically representing an animal, mythological subject or inanimate object. In the days when people could neither read or write, the sky was used as a blackboard where pictures were overlaid onto star patterns. In those paperless days, constellations were used as a means of teaching symbols, myths and morals, and used for navigation. The symbols and myths helped people to remember the lessons they were being taught, but also the remembered pattern helped people find their way in the pathless, roadless countryside. A time when there were no books, no maps, no sea charts, no method of finding your way around, except by using the sky. The origins of the earliest constellations go back to prehistory. Different cultures and countries adopted their own constellations, some of which lasted into the early 20th century before today's constellations were internationally recognised. The Sumerians were one of the first civilizations in the world along with ancient Egypt, the Indus Valley Civilization, the Milan Civilization and ancient China to develop such systems. And all had their own constellations, predating the earliest texts, for example. Uruk and Jemdet Nazar developed a system dating back to between 3500 and 3000 BC. Furthermore, the recognition of constellations has changed significantly over time. Many changed in size or shape. Some became popular only to drop into obscurity. Some were limited to a single culture or nation. We think of the signs of the zodiac when constellations are mentioned, but the zodiac constellations are just 12 of myriads that once existed when skies were clear and eyesight undamaged by too much close work. Wikipedia The origins of the zodiac remain historically uncertain. Its astrological divisions became prominent around 400 BC in Babylonian or Chaldean astronomy. The 48 traditional Western constellations were in Aratus's work, Phenomena, and Ptolemy's Almagest, though their origin probably predates these works by several centuries. Constellations in the far southern sky were added from the 15th century until the 18th century when European explorers began travelling to the southern hemisphere. In 1922, the International Astronomical Union formally accepted the modern list of 88 constellations and in 1928 adopted official constellation boundaries that together cover the entire celestial sphere. Any given point in a celestial coordinate system lies in one of the modern constellations. Today these constellations are a hodgepodge of animals from myth, gods and goddesses and modern day objects, but at one time the sky and its stars were the means of entertainment a means of explaining morals and an essential navigation aid. Star Signs and Sacred Geography Men of old did not use signposts to point the way to places. They used carved stones to give directions. One of the most significant mystic systems was that of the Picts, and their carved stones and structures 
provided lots of information about constellations, incorporating totems, clans that were constellations. For example, this is the Boar Country. Totem groups and constellations weren't aligned, and it is clear that different constellation names were used from those we use now. Cut mark stones are both lay maps and constellation maps. They diagrammatically represent a star constellation, but at the same time, that star constellation has been physically marked out on the Earth. Using sacred sites, mark stones, ley lines, and so on, with the exact proportions that occur in the constellation, which chiselled out, as above, so below. We can thus state that sacred geography is representing heaven and its constellations here on Earth. Example constellations, their meaning, and the playlist. Given the number of constellations and their changing nature, it would be impractical to provide videos for the many that are documented now, if only because many of the newer ones have no symbolic or mythical meaning. But we have provided a small selection in order of their constellation name, mostly based on Ptolemy's list but with the additions of Crux, Azra and Volpecala, Talitha and Berenice's hair, Andromeda, Cassiopeia, Cepheus and Perseus. Andromeda is also known as the Chained Lady. Her mother was called Cassiopeia and she is also a constellation. Her father was known as Cepheus yet another constellation. And the hero in the story is Perseus, another constellation. We have a video in the playlist entitled Thrones, Kings, Queens and the story of Andromeda. An Ara is an altar. We have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of Altars, Incense and the Ara constellation. Argo Navis. The mythical ship Argo, Jason uses the ship as his means of transport in his search to find the Golden Fleece. As such, the constellation is described in two videos. Ship, the symbolism of boats. And Fleece is found in the symbolism of sheep and wool. Riga, the charioteer. We have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of the Chariot. Berenice's hair. We have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of Hair. It is not a Ptolemaic constellation, but was introduced during the 3rd century BC by Conon of Samos. Canis Major and Minor, both dog constellations, we have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of the Dog. Cetus, the whale in English. Cetus was a sea monster in Greek mythology. We have a video on the symbolism of the whale in the playlist. Corona Borealis and Corona Australis, the crown. We have a video that mentions this constellation the symbolism of palaces, kites, and crowns. Crater, or crater, the cup. Crater's name is the Latinization of the Greek crater. We have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of Rivers and Streams, The Chalice, The Cup, and The Holy Grail. Crux, or Crucis, The Cross. The Crux is a constellation of the southern sky that is centred on four bright stars in a cross-shaped asterism, commonly known as the Southern Cross. It is not a Ptolemaic constellation, but described in the 1603 Uranometria. We have a video in the playlist describing the cross in general, called 
the symbolism of the cross and the mandala. Cygnus, the swan constellation. We have a video in the playlist describing the swan in general, entitled The Symbolism of the Swan. Delphinus, the dolphin. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation, The Symbolism of the Dolphin. Dracos, the dragon. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation, The Dragon of Wantley. Equilus, the horse or pony. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation, the symbolism of the horse. Eridanus, a river. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation and have given it the more general title, the symbolism of rivers and streams. Lippus, the hare. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation and have given it the more general title, the symbolism of the hare. Lupus. The Wolf. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation, but this video shows how an originally positive shamanic symbol could be redrawn to be negative. We have given it the more general title, the symbolism of the wolf. Pegasus. Pegasus was a winged horse, and we have described Pegasus within the more general video we have in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of the Horse. It also appears as the bearer of the hero Zeus in the story of Andromeda. Serpents, the serpent or snake. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation and have given it the more general title, the symbolism of the snake. Talitha, the third leap of the gazelle. Talitha is the name of two stars, Talitha Borealis and Talitha Australis. The constellation is not Ptolemaic, but shows how constellation boundaries could be moved and renamed. We have a video in the playlist for this constellation called The Symbolism of the Antelope and Gazelle. Ulpecula cum Alcere. This is not a Ptolemaic constellation, but in the 1690 Firmamentum Serbieskianum is known as Vulpecula cum Alcere. Vulpecula is the fox constellation, and we have a video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of the Fox, and Ansara is the goose that the fox holds in its jaws. We have one video in the playlist entitled The Symbolism of the Goose. Constellations Not Covered Ptolemy Rather than overwhelm the playlist with constellations, the video description below shows the constellations that were recognised by Ptolemy around 2,000 years ago, for which we have no video, but can provide links to symbols. Argonavis is the only constellation from the astronomer, astrologer, Ptolemy's original list of 48 constellations that is no longer officially recognised. Claudius Ptolemy, 100 to 170 CE, lived in Alexandria, Egypt. He wrote in ancient Greek and can be shown to have utilised Babylonian astronomical data. He might have been a Roman citizen, but was ethnically either a Greek or at least a Hellenised Egyptian under Greek rule. Ptolemy was a mathematician, astronomer, astrologer, geographer and music theorist in the days when astrology and astronomy were not separate disciplines. The library at Alexandria, a resource of the Egyptian mysteries, was accidentally burned by Julius Caesar during his civil war in 48 BC, but it is unclear how much was actually destroyed. Despite the modern belief that it was cataclysmically destroyed, there is also a belief that all was not destroyed, and that it further declined as the mysteries were replaced with Christianity. Given Ptolemy's birth date, he may only have managed to salvage a small number of the original constellations recorded in the library. Nevertheless, his is one of the earliest records of the constellations, 
and these constellations contain a wealth of symbolic and mythical content. He wrote a number of scientific treatises, one of which was the Astronomical Treatise, now known as Almagest, although it was originally entitled the Mathematica Syntaxis, or Mathematical Treatise, and later known as the Greatest Treatise. Another of which was the Astrological Treatise, in which he attempted to adapt horoscopic astrology to the Aristotelian natural philosophy of his day. This is sometimes known as the Apotelesmatica on the effects, but more commonly known as a Tetra Biblos, meaning the four books. Wikipedia Unlike most ancient Greek mathematicians, Ptolemy's writings, foremost the Almagest, never ceased to be copied or commented upon, both in late antiquity and in the Middle Ages. However, it is likely that only a few truly mastered the mathematics necessary to understand his works. Aratus Aratus, 315 or 310 BC to 240 BC, was actually a Greek didactic poet. His major extant work is his hexameter poem, Phenomena, which describes the constellations and other celestial phenomena. The first half of this poem is a verse setting of a lost work of the same name by Eudoxus of Cenidus, so it is certainly one of the earliest descriptions of the constellations in place at the time. It is not astronomically accurate, because that was not its purpose. His poem was very popular in the Greek and Roman world, as it is proved by the large number of commentaries and Latin translations, some of which survive. Aratus concentrates on the constellations surrounding the North Pole, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Draco and Cepheus, whilst Orion serves as a point of departure for those to the south. He uses an Earth-centric model and presumes the immobility of the Earth and the revolution of the sky about a fixed axis. The opening of the poem asserts the dependence of all things upon Zeus. In summary, the historical records of constellations compiled by Ptolemy or Aratus, engraved in stone by the Picts with the mysteries in the Orkneys and Scotland, and the records of the skies made by Eastern astrologer astronomers, can not only be used to date sites archaeologically, but provide a marvellous compendium of the symbols that were once prevalent across every mystery and the myths that combined those symbols. As such, the skies provide an invaluable record of the beliefs of the time and a storehouse of data which could be used by archaeologists.